Hello Oracles! Well, Elon today filed to purchase Twitter at the original price. In a 13D filing, we had seen that Elon proposed to go ahead and proceed with the deal that they had proposed back on April 25th. And Elon just tweeted saying that buying Twitter is the accelerant to creating X, the everything app. So this is something we had talked about and looks like, uh, you know, judging by the fact that Elon is going forth with this based upon the $54.20 price, looks like they probably saw the writing on the wall. They were not going to be able to get through this with getting a lower deal and the judge was not going to rule in their favor. And Elon was going to have his deposition over the next couple of days. He didn't want to have to waste two days sitting down and getting grilled upon this, kind of seeing that they weren't going to win this anyway. So Elon has decided to go ahead and do this. We haven't heard anything on Twitter's side yet to say that they have agreed to make this all happen, but it sounds like this is what is going to transpire. So what does this mean for Tesla stock and everything going forward? So as we saw today, the stock was moving very nicely, pushing up to that $255 level in the middle of the day. Then we got this news that came out and the stock came back down. Now we did have a gap that formed this morning at 242. So by us starting the day at 250, we had a pretty significant gap. My concern was that all year long we had been making higher gaps. This would have actually been a lower gap. So I wasn't really sure, but when this news came out, we came down, bounced off of 242 perfectly and came back up. So that gap is now filled, instantly filled, and we're going back up from here. So we did settle around that $249 level. We did underperform the market, but that was expected based upon the news that we had gotten about Twitter. I thought we were going to close in the low $250 range anyway, so this wasn't really all that far off. We did close above 245, so we now still have that as the support. And based upon the 242 bounce, I think the support that we have now is around that 242 to 243 level. So now that is the support that I'm going to be paying attention to. So where do we go from here and how do we react? Well, looks like there was a bit of buying that came in afterwards. We hit that 242 level and came right back up. So I haven't checked ARK's buys yet, but I have a feeling ARK probably ended up buying some more today as well. Because don't forget, when ARK buys and sells, the timing seems very good, but they've got to balance their portfolio. And since Tesla has been an underperformer, they can definitely add to their Tesla position because it is lower than the percent that they have allocated for that position. So seeing as the market definitely outperformed Tesla today, they probably ended up adding more at that level as well. And I did see some rumors over on Twitter and I don't have anything to support or back this up, but there were rumors coming out that Tesla and Google have been in talks about something. Don't truly know what it is, but just weird that it came out right after AI day. We know that Google has been working on some AI themselves. So I don't know if this is a partnership on that end. And I don't know if that played into this Twitter decision as well, because you know, Google obviously has YouTube here as a, as a platform for social media and Twitter could potentially become a competitor to Google. So I don't know if there's some deals going on over here and maybe Elon was able to hash something out with Google and they're gonna do a big partnership. I truly don't know. This is just me spitballing some ideas in the rumor mill. So you guys can share your ideas down below as well when it comes to that. And if you think this is actually true or what maybe they are coming up with if they are deciding to partner together. But now that Elon is going to be proceeding forward with Twitter, and again, we don't have confirmation on Twitter's end, but we know what Elon's plans were for this. So now I also looked at crypto and oh, crypto was taking off. Dogecoin jumped significantly. Why did it jump significantly? Elon has already said that when he purchases Twitter, he is going to utilize Dogecoin as a tipping method of payment or other forms of payment on there as well. So now Dogecoin is becoming a real source of currency potentially when it comes to the Twitter side of things. So for me, I don't talk about it a lot on here. We usually talk about Tesla, but I do put a dollar a day into Dogecoin. I just do. Why not? And I just because of the fact that Elon supports it and he's uh, you know keeping it himself, he hasn't sold any. They take it for payment over in Tesla, and he said himself that he does it because the people on his factory floors want him to support it, so he does. So this is why I've been putting a dollar in every single day. It's been another nice little DCA for me, you know, has come down significantly from where I bought it at. I initially bought it at four cents, so it's still above that, and I've been buying every single day. So now if this actually comes to fruition and it becomes a source of currency over on Twitter, that could be a nice little piece of cash for me. And so now the next questions we have is, well, does Elon have to sell more shares? So based upon information that Gary Black has worked out, looks like he, Elon would need a little bit over $5 billion to finalize this deal. Now, that doesn't mean that Elon has to come up with it. He may have financial backers behind this. Heck, maybe Google is one of those financial backers with him. 
who knows what's going on there. But if Elon does end up having to sell to cover this, he cannot make any sales until after Q3 earnings. There is a blackout period until then. Unless, of course, he knew that this was coming and he filed a 10B5-1 prior to September 16th because September 16th was the start of the blackout period. So if he filed this prior to that, we could see Elon sales going on during this time frame, but we do not know for sure. I will continue to check Form 4 filings. There's nothing that showed up as of the time of this recording. I checked it before I got on here, and the only filing that I saw was that 13D for the Twitter proposition. So that's where we're at right now, paying attention to this. I'm sure we're going to get some more information coming soon, but now this Twitter overhang and uncertainty is clarified. We know that Elon is looking to proceed with this Twitter deal. Now we just need to get some more information out of it as to how it's going to transpire. Now, the next question after that is, well, is this going to distract Elon from Tesla? That's going to be the huge question that a lot of people are having. And my personal feeling on this is it doesn't actually affect the fundamentals of Tesla. We know this, but we will track the numbers on Tesla going forward because if their deliveries and production do end up suffering, maybe he is distracted. We don't know. But if they continue to grow at record pace when it comes to production and deliveries, that is a great sign for Tesla in my eyes, because that means that they can function and operate at these high levels with Elon being distracted over at Twitter. Or if nothing else, it means that Elon is not distracted by Twitter. Either way, it's a win-win situation as long as Tesla continues to grow their business as they have been. So again, just something else to monitor going forward. And now as we look at things going forward when it comes to production and demand, of course, we had Chicken Genius coming out today with his video, and I know many of you have asked me about it, so I'm not going to do a full reaction, but I'll give you kind of my take on where I think he is coming from. Now, just a reminder, this is not me defending him. I'm just really taking a look at this video. I, you know, I've followed him for the last year, so kind of understanding where he's coming from and based upon what he said today. This is just my insights on it. So he said himself, and I like to take people at face value. I do it with Elon. I do it with everybody else unless they prove otherwise. And it sounds to me like he is coming from a place of he thinks Tesla is a good company, but when the fundamentals of the entire economy change, he then takes a look at the fundamentals of Tesla and where they're at. So based upon his analysis, looking at the fact that he is anticipating a global recession going on in the future and us pulling back down, he does not see Tesla as being a company that people are going to be buying as many cars for. And in turn, because the entire economy is going to come down, every stock is going to come down and Tesla is just going to be one of them. Again, this is just my insight based upon his take. Now, other things that I do know about him are the fact that he has a friend who worked for Tesla as a high-level executive in the Asia-Pacific region, and Tesla laid him off. He actually mentioned the layoffs in his video today, so that means to me that he took a little bit something personal. So I do think that there's a little personal feeling in there that he has against Tesla, maybe a little grudge or something. So to me, I think that's it. And so he started to look at the cash balance and say, hey, Tesla's got $18 billion of cash, all this free cash flow coming in. Why is it that they're still laying off people? Tesla must know something because, you know, why would upper management keep all this cash but still lay people off? Personally, I think Tesla knows that there is a potential for a bad ec economic recession coming up and they just wanted to protect themselves and this is their safety net. That's my take on it. I don't know if his take on it is because he has that grudge. Either way, that is where I think he's at with an insight. So when he's talking about the levels of 120 to 140 for a price target for Tesla, I think part of it is because of the fact that he foresees a really bad economic situation coming up for the entire world, and Tesla is just going to follow suit and come down. Another piece of it is because I think he does have a little bit of a grudge, and he's a little bit upset. That's my take. You guys can let me know in the comments below what your take is. And so overall, I don't think he's bearish on the company. I think he's just bearish on the stock price currently based upon where he foresees the future going when it comes to the entire economy. That's it on my take. But again, you guys let me know what you think on it. So overall, you know, I don't follow him a lot. I usually just kind of check him out when you guys mention something that he's talking about. Because, you know, previously when I was watching him before, you guys know, he was a big time bull, you know, and there's a lot of bulls out there right now. They're like, oh, what happened? You were a bull before. And, you know, that's his take. You know, everybody's entitled to their own decisions and their own thoughts. That's what his thoughts are. That's my take on his thoughts. You know, he does what his own thing is. That's fine. We know that he has shorted the stock before. We know I've already seen some other bulls that are out there who are also shorting the stock because they think the entire economy is going to come down. 
But now going back to videos that he had had previously, he had even discussed that he is the kind of guy who times the market. And he has said himself that, you know, timing the market is not as wise as time in the market. So that for me is why I dollar cost average. He's actually one of the reasons why I do what I do because, you know, I don't have the time to time the market. He has said himself it's not as wise to do. So I have done that, but that's why I also hedge myself with cash. So I dollar cost average. And I do try to time the market a little bit with my extra cash, just like I did when we pulled down to 247. So I kind of blended my own ideas based off of some of the things that he has said in the past. And, you know, and I followed a bunch of other people as well and got their ideas. But again, still long term. And he even said himself, long term, the stock is going to do well. But in the near term, we could see some more pain. So again, that's my take on all of this. I'm going to continue with my plan going forward. I'm still going to dollar cost average. I didn't add anything extra today, but I still added my $25. I'm building up my cash reserves. And I'm going to take this time because as this entire stock market is starting to push back up, I'm going to take a look at these uh, other stocks that I have, these stocks that I don't want to hold on to for a long time. If they start to push up to that level where I'm breaking even, I will sell out of them and free up that cash because who knows what's going to happen with the economy if we do pull down. I want to be ready for that. Now, we are getting some rumors coming out of the Fed thinking they may be pulling a bit more of a dovish stance coming up. This is something we have talked about before as well, which, you know, the, the Fed coming out here may be coming up with a little bit more of a dovish stance. So that could push the stock market back up again. And I'll take that opportunity because until we get inflation actually in line and we get the Fed saying, all right, we are good with inflation. We can now start pulling interest rates down until we get to that point. I still am going to consider the economy and the market a bit unstable. So I will take any advantage of the stock market moving up to sell anything out because I don't think we are going to go on any sort of real bull market run until the Fed actually says we are going to U-turn on our rates. And so now today we had some nice volume coming in, 109 million shares trading hands. These are the levels that we were talking about before when we're pushing up. Now this could have happened by this many shares just because we were pushing up strong early and then we had that Twitter news. That could have been a reason why we had a lot of the volume coming in. RSI is still down at 34, so still on those lower levels, expecting some more buying pressure to be coming in. I think we dropped down those levels and we had that overreaction from the delivery news that brought us down. Now we're gonna kind of come back up and just trade with the market. Obviously the Twitter news today switched that a little bit, but otherwise we should be trading with the market and looking at the way we kind of bounced around today, we are doing a good job of forming that head for the inverse head and shoulders pattern. So we'll see where we go tomorrow. You know, I have a feeling that with the market being as green as it was the last two days, we may still get some green tomorrow. Maybe we get a little bit selling off and profit taking, but last time we saw pushes like this in the overall market, it did push up significantly for a little while. So we may see a little bit of a run going forward. And now some important dates to pay attention to when we're looking at the stock movement is going to be happening next week. On October 13th, we are going to be getting the CPI data. And then on the 14th, we are going to be getting the PPI data. So those are the two indicators that the Fed is going to look at when it comes to inflation most recently. So we're going to see those. And again, we had a higher than expected number for inflation for the CPI back in September. We are looking for a lower number. Ideally, I said it back in September, I wanted to see a seven in the front. We went in the wrong direction. I would like to see a seven this time around. I have not seen expectations yet. We will probably get those at the end of the week. So once we see those, I will share those with you guys to show what the expectations are for CPI. Now, again, just because expectations may come down doesn't mean we're in the clear. Even if we beat expectations, inflation is still extremely high. We have a long road to go to get inflation down. And this is why I don't think we are going to start a full bull run market for quite a while, probably at least 12 months. And I, I do have to mention, because talking with many of you in the comments about how, you know, being a Tesla investor is really being on a roller coaster ride. It's wild. It is all over the place. And it's significantly more wild than most other stocks that are out there. And somebody over on Twitter had mentioned how the reaction to people and how they are when it comes to Tesla stock movements and news is like treating a fart like it's a tornado. To me, that was hilarious. And it's so true. We swing up and down so much more than we really should. For instance, we looked at it yesterday, you know, deliveries were down five and a half percent based upon expectations, but the stock sold off eight and a half percent. That is the overreactions that we see going in both directions. A lot of times market manipulators are looking to cause that intentionally. They intentionally want to drive the stock down or up more than it should be because that buffer is where they can make that extra money. The more they can push it down, the more they get people to sell out. 
For instance, all right, so they drop down 5.5%, but they push it down that 8.5%. They get a bunch of extra people to paper hand and sell at those lower levels. The more people who sell out because of the overreaction, the lower they can end up buying back in to then drive the price back up again. That's how the market manipulation works. And the more they can get that overreaction, the more money they're going to make in that little extra piece down there. And now the same does end up running on the other end. And this is something that we've talked about before as well is you get that FOMO. People are like, we're never coming down. We're going to the moon. The stock is never going to come back. And it goes and goes and market manipulators are going to just take advantage of that and keep on running it up. And then they pull the rug out and that's how they do it. And then people are like, oh my God, now I'm holding the bag. And they play with our emotions. That's how they do this. So for me, I am a very strong bull when it comes to Tesla. I love watching the stock run, but that's also why I said we got to pay attention to levels. When we hit that 313 level, I'm like, all right, I would love to break through that. I want to do that, but I want to be realistic looking at the other levels that we have below, looking at the news that we had coming up. It's just one of those things where I don't want to spread FUD. I don't want to take the excitement away, but I also don't want to have people be here in the situation of, oh my God, I bought at these levels. Now what am I going to do? I'm just trying to prevent a lot of that from happening. Again, long-term bull, love this stock. Just wanna make sure that we keep our emotions in check on both ends of the spectrum. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you guys feel about the Twitter deal going back on with Elon? Do you think he's going to have to sell? Do you think he has financial backers? Do you think this is going to be good for Tesla in the future? Maybe it's the type of advertising platform that they are going to be able to utilize. Who knows what's going to happen with this? Maybe they could take payments through Twitter. Who knows? Um, but let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you think it's going to be a good thing, whether it's going to be a bad thing, whether you think this is going to distract Elon, whether you think it's actually going to affect Tesla at all. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat, that link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon, that link is also in the description. Thank you so much, have a great one.